Today on the Joy of Editing, I'll be looking at the new update for Topaz Photo AI. You spoke and Topaz listened. Thanks to you, Lens Blur and Motion Blur are back, and I know a lot of you out there will be happy about that. We're going to take a look at this new update. This is version 1.3.1. I'm your host, Dave Kelly. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the joy of editing. Well, you spoke and Topaz listened. I know a lot of you were not happy when Topaz took away lens blur and motion blur in the sharpen module and replaced it with the new strong model, which kind of figures out do you need lens blur or motion blur? And it didn't give you that choice to pick between one or the other. One of the reasons a lot of us choose Topaz products is because we've always had that ability through the many adjustments they've given us to make choices. Do we want to use a certain adjustment over another adjustment. Autopilot is great, but at the end of the day, we want to make the final decision on how we want the image to look. So we can choose between the standard model, the lens blur model, or the motion blur model, and how much or how little of that effect we want. And thanks to your feedback to Topaz, we have lens blur and motion blur back, along with a new strong model giving us four total choices. On the screen now, you can see the changes here in 1.3.1, Improved Standard Enhanced Model. And this is what I want to focus on today. They've added a preference for enabling legacy sharpened models, and that's the lens blur and motion blur. We're going to go over that today. You can go ahead and pause the video if you want to see what other changes and fixes they've made. This will be a shorter video for you today. But anyway, you'll notice I have this image here. This is just a TIFF file. It's done some noise reduction. If I open up the sharpen module, you can see standard and strong. Now we don't see the lens blur or motion blur in here, but here's what you have to do. Just come up to the menu. Uh, I'm on a Mac, depending if you're on a PC, it may be in a different spot, but under preferences, click on preferences and you're going to go to general and then just scroll down where you see legacy models. Legacy models are hidden and then turn this on. But notice what it says after I turn this on. Legacy models are shown. They are never recommended by autopilot. So this is something that you have to determine for yourself. Do you need to use these legacy models? And I'm sure a lot of times you're going to want to use them. But all you have to do is click save. So the autopilot will never choose lens blur or motion blur. But now you can see they're there. Here's lens blur. Here's motion blur. And I find out that it does give you a suggested amount to use. Like if I click on lens blur. And if I would change either strength or clarity or both, if I'd go back and reset the autopilot settings, when I opened up lens blur or motion blur again, these settings would be set to the level before I made an adjustment. Which leads me to believe that Topaz are giving us some recommended starting points. Now, if you notice, whenever I clicked on lens blur or motion blur, this now says reset the autopilot settings because autopilot has chosen standard. So if I go ahead and click reset the autopilot settings, now we're back on standard, and that is the recommended strength right there. Now, of course, I could adjust it from there. Now, this image is a little on the soft side, and you can uh, look on the left-hand side. You can see the noise and the sharpness of the image. If I take the strength and I drag it, let's drag it the whole way to the right and see what it does here. And it makes it a little sharper, especially the bug here. But the flower, I wish, could be a little bit sharper here. And this is where we could try the different models out. So we can go ahead and click on Strong. And here's the Strength here. Give it a second here to update. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now I'm going to take this Strength and just watch the image on the right. I'm going to take it. Let's drag it the whole way up to the right just to see what kind of uh, effect we get at full strength. It's not much different from Standard. Here's Standard. Give it a chance to update here. Here's Standard. And here's Strong. The bug looks a little bit better, but the flower still doesn't look that great. I think I can get more sharpness out of it. Let me try lens blur. I'll click on lens blur. Give it a second here to update and wait for it. It is almost there. Okay, so there it is. Okay, that bug still looks good, but the strength is really low. I'm going to go ahead and drag it the whole way to the right just to see the maximum amount we can get out of this and see what kind of a improvement we get. And yeah, that's a really nice improvement. You see the nice little bit of sharpness that's coming out in the uh, petals of this flower here, as opposed to say, let's check it between lens blur and standard. Here is standard, has to update again. So that's standard. Now mainly look at the flower petals and here is lens blur. 
Yeah, see, that looks much better. It's probably a little too strong, so I pull back on it. But this is what I mean by we have the abilities to make the adjustments ourselves, and I really like that. And, of course, we also have clarity. I could pull up on this clarity a little bit to see if that helps it out. Let's see if this helps it out any. It's almost updated, and here it is now. It's not doing a whole lot. I'd probably just pull it back a little bit, and I think... That's a nice improvement. Now let's check out motion blur. I'll click on motion blur. We'll see what happens here. Not bad. It's still soft in the flower. Let's take it the whole way up and see the maximum effect we can get out of this thing. Mm, it's definitely better than standard. Here is standard and here is motion blur. And now here is lens blur. And you know, I think I like lens blur. I went ahead and zoomed into 200% so we could get up close and personal with this. So the image on the left is the original. And the image on the right is after Photo AI. So I'm really happy with these results. Let me go ahead and click on Standard. And so you can see that's what Standard looks like and with the strength the whole way up. And now here is what Motion Blur looks like. And I have the strength the whole way up here. You see, I don't like that as much. I don't like what's happening here on the flower. And here is what Strong looks like. And I had to really pull up the strength in this as well. And I don't like that really. I don't like what's happening in the flower in here, but here is lens blur. And lens blur looks the most natural for me. Let me know what you think in the comments section below, but I'm so glad they brought back lens blur and motion blur. And again, thanks to you out there that have uh, gave your feedback to Topaz because thanks to you, we have lens blur and motion blur back. And thanks to you, Topaz, for listening. Now, here is my overall before and here is my after, and that really looks great to me. I think it did a wonderful job. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video showing you the new update for Topaz Photo AI version 1.3.1 with lens blur and motion blur back. If you enjoyed the video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.